how to find corrected calcium in relation with albumin and anion as we know the normal serum calcium is 8.7 to 10.2 but remember we say when there is normal serum albumin so serum albumin level is very very important calcium is in ionized form which can be called free calcium so it is like uh, 50 percent and it can be bound with protein like albumin which is 40 percent 10 percent can also be bound with anion such as phosphate this is 10 percent now remember the ionized calcium is in equilibrium with calcium bound with albumin so it's mean the bound calcium is in equilibrium with free calcium this albumin level is very important when you are increasing or decreasing it will alter the ionized calcium or free calcium level so any condition which cause change in serum albumin level like hypoalbuminemia and serum A9 will alter serum calcium concentration without affecting the clinically relevant ionized calcium level. So now let's let understand this. Albumin is having negative charge so proton which having positive charge are trying to bind with albumin and calcium which having positive charge are trying to bind with albumin. When we disturb the value of albumin or proton it will disturb the value of calcium and proton is altered by uh, alkalosis or acidosis as in alkalosis there is decrease in proton so it means that more calcium is going to bound with albumin so the free calcium will decrease that's why we can say that alkalosis is going to cause hypocalcemia alkalosis cause hypocalcemia in acidosis which means there is increase in proton so now more proton is going to bound with albumin and space per calcium will be less that's why uh, ionized calcium is going to increase so we can say acidosis cause hypercalcemia if we disturb the value of albumin the serum calcium value will be altered like in hypoalbuminemia there will be increase in ionized or free calcium so we can say hypoalbuminemia is going to cause hypercalcemia and increased albumin will cause decrease in calcium i mean hypocalcemia so simply alkalosis is going to cause hypocalcemia and acidosis is going to cause hypercalcemia now for albumin hypoalbuminemia is going to cause hypercalcemia hypercalcemia and uh, hyperalbuminemia is going to cause hypocalcemia so now any condition which can cause this we need to find uh, the corrected calcium level for example uh, a patient having a uh, total calcium 7 mg per deciliter with an albumin 2 gram per deciliter the normal albumin level is 4 gram per deciliter now here we are going to find the corrected or true calcium level in this patient uh, remember one fall in albumin we need to add 0.8 mg per deciliter of calcium to total calcium here now as we know the total calcium is 7 mg per deciliter and albumin is 2 it means that 2 drop in albumin is there so for two drop of albumin we need to add 1.6 mg per deciliter of calcium to total calcium so now 7 plus 1.6 is equal to 8.6 this is the total calcium corrected value formula for corrected calcium in hypoalbuminemia uh, just simply remember one fall in albumin we are going to add 0.8 mg per deciliter calcium to total calcium